This is the manual that was included with the high voltage probe. Again, the probe that I had ordered was a Hantech uh, T3100. Specifications for the Hantech probe are a lot better than this. And you can see in the bag here where it's actually marked a Hantech probe. It was advertised as a T3100, but that's not what it is. Uh, P4100 here. There's no brand or anything listed on this. Doesn't look like a bad probe really from a construction standpoint. It just uh, doesn't have the D ratings that the 3100 does. So it compensates just fine. I'll go ahead and run a couple of quick tests with it. I'm going to go ahead and touch the Hantech PP150 probe that I tested before and this no brand high voltage probe up to the RF generator. Probes are already compensated. Let's see I've set the high voltage probe for a divide by 100. Uh, 121 megahertz and you can see the high voltage probe has already started to attenuate quite a bit. Let's see if our 100 megahertz probe is rolling off pretty fast. Both probes are now attached to the high voltage pulser. Both channels are set for 50 volts per division. We're putting out about 400 volts now. Again, the rise time for this is roughly 70 uh, nanoseconds. So I'm not too surprised that the two probes are close. So again, I'm not going to take the Hantech probe up much higher. Uh, so I'm just going to disconnect it from the pulser and we'll run some higher voltage tests. Now only the high voltage probe is attached. You can see we're set at about 500 volts per division. Putting out roughly a kilovolt now. Probe doesn't seem to be having too much trouble with this. The previous test I was running up in this area here and I was unable to cause the probe to have any problems. My next plan is to go out here into about a hundred megahertz range. It looks like the probe has a limit of about 100 volts at this area. So to run this test, I have two amplifiers. This is the exciter. This drives a secondary amplifier. You can see the output of that is driving our test probe. And the other lead goes off to our dummy load. Coming off the dummy load, we have another sense point. It's going through a fairly good attenuator. And I use that as a monitor. In this case, the monitor signal goes through a 50 ohm pad, then into a buffer amplifier. So the probe. It goes through the Cytel clamp. This is a uh, gas discharge tube, fairly low voltage. And you can see our strap just runs back up to the BNC. So if this probe is to arc and this tube breaks down, this is going to close the loop. This box contains two amplifiers. This is DC coupled. So if something were to go wrong, this is our next stage of protection. You can see this runs off a of USB supply. This is actually plugged into an outlet that's totally isolated from the scope. Coming off of the output of the amps, we go into these two boxes here. 
These are two uh, high-speed surge protectors. And then into the scope. So in this case, the scope has been terminated for 50 ohms. You get an idea here. It's what the whole setup looks like. As you can see, we're running the amplifier currently roughly about 100 megahertz. You can see I'm outputting currently about 36 volts. And the probe is doing fine with this. like eh. so it looks like the probes already having some problems here hmm. it's interesting okay so our monitor port here you can see the amplitude of this decreases so when the probe is doing whatever it's doing here it is actually changing the loading of our amp and so go ahead and increase this even further Yeah, the probe just sits here and oscillates. <laughs> you have to understand, I guess, what's going on with it. It really doesn't feel warm to the touch. Well, unfortunately, after several cycles, our probe is now dead completely. It appears to have opened up. I've uh, gone out and checked all the hardware. Uh, no damage to our front end of the amplifier. Everything appears fine. It looks like just the probe itself has opened up. The reviews on Amazon for this particular probe were quite good. Again, it's not the probe I had ordered. But uh, you look at the reviews and people are using it to test 120 volts off their AC lines and you know really that's a very low frequency and uh, quite a low voltage compared to what this probe was rated for. So I would expect in those kinds of conditions it's probably fine but I'd say using it for high frequency RF work it's out of the question. And really it's kind of strange I really wasn't pushing the probe much beyond what the curve shows here when it died so yeah I'm saying it's marginal at best yeah worth 25 bucks I don't think so so we started taking the probe here apart we snipped off the uh, coax towards the end of the tip here uh, the coax in the end here seemed fine whatever it is it's up in the head here you ohm this out and this is an open from the tip to the center of the coax you can see here it's kind of a crimped maybe a spot welded joint it's hard to say I guess the tip here may be press fit I'll pull this apart and let's see what it looks like Yeah, so what I did was take a pair of side cutters here. Just went around this thing. This is a spot welded joint. Hmm. 
Eh. Wow. That's all they had for a front end for this thing. <laughs> yep. You can see uh tip resistor here is just burn black. <laughs> yep. You can see here I pull out this wire. I think this was soldered to the end of this resistor here. I don't know if the heat melted that solder joint and that's why the probe started getting intermittent. <laughs> yeah, indeed looking at the uh, Looking at the two resistors, uh, this is charred black. It uh, it's not an open, so yeah, it looks like the actual failure point is uh, possibly a solder joint here. Hmm. Well, yeah. that's what twenty-five bucks will get you. <laughs>